Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 2024 Baracus Bloom User Conference. My name is Dana Halpin, and I'm a consulting manager here at VBCC. Today, we're going to learn more about the SAGE Alerts and Workflow Program. Our agenda today is five areas. We're going to learn more about the theory of actionable insight, discover ways to utilize SAGE Alerts to better your business, give you a live view of the program, talk about an implementation outline and what that means to you, and pricing. And I think you'll see that the program is very affordable. Briefly, let's discuss and chat about what your company can do better. So we came up with some areas every company has in common to do better at. Get paid faster, reduce bad debt. It would be nice to know to be able to reach out to your customers sooner to reduce that bad debt. I think everybody has that in common. Also fulfilling orders faster, knowing promise dates, when your inventory comes in to be able to fulfill orders, all of that is pertinent information to be efficient. Manage customers' sales activities and buying habits. We have salespeople out there going out there to get new business. However, what about the customers that are already on our books and have been buying from us? Wouldn't it be nice to have the time to be able to manage them to discover, oh, they haven't bought from us in a few weeks or a few months or even a few years. Everybody would like to improve inventory control, knowing and being alerted on low stock reorder points, et cetera. Spot job bottlenecks and inefficiencies faster. There are congestion points in production that stops or slows down your system. Wouldn't it be nice to know if you're going over budget or watch over these projects on a daily basis? And then everybody can do better at making less data entry mistakes. Is there a way, though, to automate this to be able to show everybody, you know, the inconsistencies within your data? Lastly, communication between departments. We all go out there and credit department is looking at aging reports and the finance department is looking at the balance sheet. They're all running reports for the same data. They're coming up with perhaps different results, perhaps different charts, and the ability to be able to have one point of truth between all departments is certainly a actionable insight and a way to do better between you and your coworkers. I said actionable insight. Now, what does this mean? All of those areas that we saw we can do better in Actionable insight is the foundation to making that happen. It is the data-driven findings that provide clear guidance for taking specific actions and making decisions. Actionable insight gives you the ability to make decision-making proactively, not using your gut, but looking at the evidence. Actionable insight also allows you to solve problems. It helps with clear directions and it asks the question, answers the question, so what now? Discovering new opportunities, it leaves room for less risk. Actionable insight also improves your performance. It helps you to stay in the know and act. Also, actionable insight allows you to gain gain a competitive edge. A lot of companies are so focused on competitors, they fail to look at their internal users and what those needs are. They find that addressing the internal users' needs gives them the ability to be a leader in the marketplace and be able to compete better. Streamline processes. Actionable insight allows you to remove unnecessary steps or activities to be more efficient and effective. And lastly, increasing efficiency. Gain clear understanding of what's working and what's not. So actionable insight is a way for your company to be able to better your performance, take care of those areas that you can certainly improve upon. Now, Sage Alerts and Workflow is actionable insight. It automates the detection and the response to critical time-sensitive transactions and other activities. And after, it responds with real-time alerts and intelligent workflow. The program is a software solution that automates the if-then business process within your organization's ERP, HR, CRM, and related software applications. 
don't wait to react. Let the software monitor at the speed of the data. The if this activity condition then do that is the theory behind Sage Alerts and Workflow. It is in real time and it'll notify your users of these conditions and what to do. So we always talk about automating processes. Well, Sage Alerts and Workflow is the king of automation. It automates the detection. You know 75% of what you need to know. Why not automate the other 25%? It automates the delivery. We can deliver in email format, file formats, or reporting. You push what people want, how they want it, and when they need it. And then, lastly, we automate the action. If this happens, then do that. All in all, Sage Alerts and Workflow saves you time, makes you more responsive, and increasing knowledge at the same time. Knowledge is power. We hear that phrase a lot. A fun fact about Sage Alerts and Workflow is that it used to be called Knowledge Sync. The ability to have a program out there running 24 seven and alerting your users about certain specific conditions is basically like having an invisible coworker, a virtual assistant, a remote employee. We can compare it to Alexa or Surrey. They are always in the background working, definitely no salary involved, so it saves you money. The program is, like I said, 24 seven. It goes out into your ERP. It monitors all the conditions that you set up and then it triggers those alerts. It can be running during specific uh, schedules, uh, not to, you can set it up not to run on holidays, et cetera. So, when we say knowledge is power, this program is exactly that. It used to be called Knowledge Sync. You're going to see the reference to Knowledge Sync sometimes when we talk about websites for Sage Alerts and Workflow. That is where all that comes from. The basis of Sage Alerts and Workflow is knowledge. So let's talk about areas where Sage Alerts and Workflow can work for you. The first one is a timed response. So if a condition is within a certain number of days, today or tomorrow, during this week, X days away in the past, we can set up alerts to trigger certain conditions based on these dates. So you have, think about all the dates in your ERP. You have due date, creation date, ship date, promise date, invoice date, et cetera, et cetera. When you reach a time frame that you set up, what do you want to happen? Well, a lot of times people, for example, need drawings delivered within a certain period of time. You can set up an alert to say that. Also, an approval process. So you can say once um, this timeline has been achieved, this purchase order, for example, has been approved, and then that person is alerted to do the next step. And then also, are we meeting the dates? Like an audit. You can audit these dates. Are we meeting promise dates? Are we meeting uh, ship dates? You can monitor against a date in the system or a timestamp. Basically, this is probably uh, one of the most common scenarios that Sage Alerts and Workflow is used for, timed responses. Continuing on, I wanted to show you some real live examples of a timed response. These are some warehouse alerts over on the left you'll see an order summary. This is an email that is sent out possibly every day, possibly every week. And it is summarizing the orders for that, for that day in this example. So it summarizes them by the shipment, ship via, whether it's e-commerce, UPS, LTL. And it tells the warehouse, hey, these are the orders that are coming in. And it, you can even segregate that based off of the customer, based off of the warehouse, uh, to be able to alert the appropriate parties. On the right, we have another warehouse alert. This is giving the actual information in a table format with some attachments. So not only are they notifying the warehouse of open orders, they're also sending a pick tick and a label with a barcode in the email as well. 
with a nice table underneath that displays the customer, the sales order number, and how it's being shipped. Another area Sage Alerts and Workflow is great at is threshold monitoring. You're getting closer, you've exceeded, you're not even close. So it goes out there and it monitors those type of situations, total sales, AR overdue, gross profit percentage, vendor late deliveries, low stock levels, large orders placed. Every day it goes out and it monitors. So at 9 a.m. you could say, hey, you're 30% of your goal. And then you could have another alert going out at 3 p.m. saying now you're at 70% of your goal. These are thresholds. Real live example is an item is at or below a reorder point. This is just showing uh, the warehouse, for example, that they need to order more stock. So in this particular case, I have all the warehouses in one table, but I can split this alert up to email Joe in the East Warehouse for his list and Sam in the West Warehouse to email his list. Another area that Sage Alerts and Workflow is great at is exception management. What data values require special attention or action? So sometimes an order is taken off a hold, you wanna know that. COD terms, substitution's not allowed. A customer is this. Don't allow partial shipments for this customer. What is the pallet and weight configuration? If it's this, then do that. So these are things that I wanna know and what changes are outside of the data model. Real live example. This is a simple email alert based on sales order conditions. In this case, this company always wants the, the sales order deposit amount to equal the order amount. An exception would be if that is not the case. So they are alerting that the deposit amount on a sales order doesn't equal the order amount, therefore some action needs to be taken. Secondly, this email is emailing sales reps and order entry users that there's some sort of action that needs to be taken before shipping. Now they could have a UDF for their own order status and that's what triggers this email. And uh, they can it can be set up to email, like I said, sales reps, uh, customer service reps, all based on you know who's responsible for what. Then lastly, this is a situation where this customer, um, or I'm sorry, this, um, company wanted to be alerted when a, per a standard purchase order does not have a sales order linked. So in this case, that is a mandatory field that they need to fill in. A purchase order needs to have a sales order linked. So if a sales order number is blank on a purchase order, then they send over those exceptions. And then vice versa, they want to know the other way too. They want to know if a sales order does not have a purchase order number in the data, they would be alerted as well. Triggered updates. Triggered updates are critical business decisions that you want to be in the know about. Is a client overdue? When? Make the change to their credit status. An item is below minimum. Create a PO. Item not sold in 30 days, lower its price. Quote expires in seven days, sc schedule a follow-up call. All of these are triggers. And then after that trigger, what do you wanna do? Real life example is this is an alert when cash is going out. So AP um, cuts a check run. The manager wants to know exactly what went out, when it was updated, what the check amount was and uh, to who. So this alert here is after that check run, but you certainly can have this type of alert go out before, before it's updated. And that way, um, maybe the AP manager needs to approve that check run um, to go out. And this is a way to do that, to do it via email rather than send the um, AP manager, manager a report and ask for their approval. It can be all be done over Sage Alerts and Workflow in an email format with a table. The next one on the bottom is knowing when a per, knowing when a purchase order was received. So after that, what is the next step? So the warehouse would be notified, hey, uh, or the warehouse received in these items. And then this information can go to the next party who's responsible and find out okay, are we ready to ship some sales orders based off of this? Forms delivery. You have to know that 
so much of your user's time is generating and delivering forms and documents manually. So what we're saying here is use Sage Alerts and Workflow to do that heavy lifting for you. And this is internally and externally. You know, a lot of times we say forms delivery and people think, oh, that means emailing invoices to customers. Yes, it does. However, internally, you can CC a salesperson and inform your users with forms via Sage Alerts and Workflow about, hey, we sent this to this person. We just want you to be aware of it. And this is the document that was sent. It's that one source of truth. Again, the customer sees the same document as the salesperson. Next, quotes, invoices, statements, dunning notes, notices, those all can be generated out of the system and attached to an email. Picking lists, receipts, transfers, physical counts, that would be internal to you and purchase orders and returns as well. Real live example, these are alerts to get paid faster. On the left, this is an alert that just simply says, hey, see attached invoice and contact us with any questions. It attaches the invoice, which is a crystal report. And um, on the right, this one is different because there are, for this particular company, they have past due invoice alerts set up based off of the number of days past the due date. So this one on the right is saying, okay, this one was due on 10-11. So four days after that, alert them that it's due. And then they have another alert saying in 20 days, in 30 days, in 45 days. So they just keep at it and at it and at it, emailing the customer that the invoice is past due and hasn't been paid. So you can do that. You can set up the same alert multiple times based on multiple conditions. This one in particular was for the four days. And then you'll see at the bottom there, it also was sent to, uh, it also acknowledges that it was sent to different people as well. So we have um, accounts at Safeway, Jay Smith at Safeway, and then you certainly can have your information at the bottom of who to contact with any questions as well. Next, we have reports or file distributions. Sage Alerts and Workflow handles this beautifully. You can stop generating and distributing reports manually. So for example, you could, and this is done um, with Crystal Reports or SSRS reporting services. You can set up reports to be automated and email today's shipments to your stock reorder points, gross, gross profit to your finance department, job status, cash on hand and back order reports, for example. This process is so manual, manual I see with the companies that we work with. Sage Alerts and Workflow can replicate these based on any criteria that you set it, set it up for. Real live examples. The first one is um, just a report that the sales department wants to see every night at six o'clock. And it's a crystal report. On the right, you'll see the columns. I had to black out some stuff for confidentiality, of course, but uh, I think you get the point that they wanna see this every day, what the profit is, what the sales order is. Um, it's a monthly sales back order, back log report. At the bottom, the automa automatic creation of a flat file daily when invoicing new orders for import into feedback automation. So the creation of a flat file can be done within Sage Alerts and Workflow. That flat file can be used to import into Sage 100 and it saves a ton of time when you do things like this. Assignments and approvals. Sage Alerts and Workflow does a great job. You need to stop the delay in getting approvals and automate your rules. Some examples, the order was received, what's next? the design, fixed asset approved, paid, why don't you create the asset? Service request received, notify the tech, PO approval process is self-explanatory, a check request for a certain dollar amount needs approval. Real live examples. On the left, you'll see purchase orders were approved. Now, in something like this, you probably will need a user-defined field for the to get the workflow right. So in this case, it's in the UDF approver box in Sage. It says, hey, the following POs have been approved. It's triggered by that UDF. It was a checkbox that somebody had to check. It tells you who the approver was, the amount, um, and any pertinent information. On the right, 
these are vendors that have been put on hold. Once again, we have user defined fields and there's a script in here that the AP manager puts certain invoices and vendors on hold and they want to be able to alert the whole staff about it. Data cleansing. You can use Sage Alerts and Workflow to find bad data or missing data. This includes duplicate records, email addresses, for example, without the at sign, missing components on an order, missing promise dates, jobs without a project manager, invoices without freight charges. So the system can go out there and clean it up for you, notify you. And this is something that is only if you didn't have Sage Alerts and Workflow, how are you going to find this, right? Are you going to spend some time of your day looking for this kind of information? Probably not. Are you going to stumble upon it? Yes. Are you going to fix it then? Yes. Well, why not be notified for these types of conditions on a weekly basis? And then you know uh, what you need to fix all at once and just keep on it on a weekly basis in a timely manner. You know, fail failure to notice this stuff does and decrease productivity and profitability. Real live example. So this alert really wasn't intended for bad data. It was just intended to go out to the credit department and say, hey, you got to call these people. They're overdue on their invoices. But look what happens. You can see that the primary contact field is not coming up with anything. Some of the phone numbers are blank. So that alerts the credit department, hey, we need to maintain our database better. So they would go in and fix the, these types of things. So you can see that alerts can cross over different scenarios. This, this one was not for a data exception type of alert, but it ended up being so in the end. Enterprise-wide auditing. Is our ERP consistent? Show me where it's not. So Sage Alerts and Workflow is that invisible assistant that goes out and can audit your data. Was a priority changed? Is Was the credit limit changed? Was the sales rep changed? Due date, promise dates, discount dates have changed. Who actually changed them? You can track changes and save this data for historical analysis. This is something that is, is priceless, in my opinion, to be able to know what's happening and who's doing it. Lots of data is out there, but do you actually believe it? Sometimes when companies have mergers and ac acquisitions, you know, we have a lot of data being merged into each, into each other. We want to be able to find out what data is pertinent and really valuable. And if it is the truth, if it is paints a true picture, what we call that one point of truth, you can drill down into the database with Sage Alerts and Workflow and make sure that all the data is consistent. You know, sometimes when we bring in another company, you know, the vendors aren't numbered the same, the addresses are different. This would be able to go out there and tell you, hey, you know, maybe become more aligned in your database and with making these types of changes. Real live example is at the top, you know, the terms code changed and maybe you want to be uh, informed about that. So we have columns on the right there, old terms code, new terms code. Is that OK? You know, that would go out to somebody who would, you know, say, no, it's not. Or yes, it is on the bottom. Same kind of thing. Promise date has changed. Old promise date, new promise date. You know, these are things that your uh, warehouse or your customer service people need to know about. They're not going to monitor this by going into sales order entry and say, oh, that looks different. Was it changed? The ability to have the system go out and notify people of these types of changes is, is really invaluable. Inactivity detection. So Sage Alerts and Workflow allows you um, to monitor absence of data. So acting on the presence of data is one thing. Acting on the absence of data is another. We focus so much on the presence of data, but what about the absence? Customer buying habits, for example, have changed. They don't have as many orders. They're not buying as much. We, Like I said earlier, salespeople, are, they're not going out there and spending their time on who's not buying. They're going out there to get new sales. So this is a way to monitor your current customers Inventory has no activity since whatever date. Vendors without POs in such and such a time. Prospect has not been contacted. So these are inactivity detections that can really help your business. 
Real life examples. On the left, customers with no orders placed this month. It's just a table. It's just showing you who they are. Cust uh, real life example on the right, customers with no sales in the past 60 days. It shows you the balances, their credit limits. Now, that's very similar alert, but perhaps they're going to two different people. And one of them is in a month, one of, a, one of them is in 60 days. Perhaps a, a, one of the managers wants to be notified about the 30 days. Another one doesn't really want to see it until it's um, further along. So very customizable. Anytime, anywhere alerts. The here and now is different for each employee. So we can alert people by a text message, a dashboard, a web page. It's not just your email. They have different email addresses, possibly, home versus work. Sometimes people do want to be alerted on their home email address for whatever reason. Do you want to alert people on weekdays versus weekends, holidays? And what type of alert acknowledgements fall into this, these schedules? So not every person has the same location, device, work hours. You can pre, you know, there's so many predefined alerts that come with Sage Alerts and Workflow. Each person wants it different, deli different, dif delivered differently. And Sage Alerts and Workflow are so flexible when it comes to schedules and subscribers and things like that, which we'll see in a, in a minute. So let's take a closer look at the program. The Sage Alerts and Workflow is web-based. Let me just log in here. And it does have um, what we call three modules over here on the left, event designer, monitor, and admin. I'm going to work from the bottom up and explain admin first. When I open up the admin module, you'll see these areas here. So first one is user accounts. This is where you set up your roles and users for the program. Then we have services. Uh, we talked about delivery options. You can email people. We can set up a web webcasting page. You can use uh, SSRS and you could do texting. That's what this is all about. And this is where it's set up. Holiday schedule. We talked about, uh, you know, going in and, and defining your holidays so people aren't alerted on those days. Application settings is all of the settings for the Sage Alerts and Workflow program, um, behind the scenes type of things and linked servers. So in here, this is more of an admin type of task, obviously, but that is where you would set up um, that information. Now, the monitor is very cool. It allows you to monitor all of the uh, alerts that you have set up. Did they go out? Are the server? Are, what is the server status? Is it even on? You know, sometimes we get called with, my alerts didn't go out today. Well, the service wasn't even running. And we can see that from in here. Then it tells you what type of scheduling that you have. So these, these application events are set up to be scheduled today, tomorrow, the next day, and it'll give you that information. Application events, this is where you can go out and say, okay, do I have any alerts pending? What was checked? So if I come in here and I back up the date, maybe October 1st, probably more in here. So this will tell me that, oh, these alerts were all checked on these specific dates. Were they triggered? I come over here, yes, some of them were triggered. That means success, that alert was delivered. Errors will tell me if they some of them weren't delivered and what that error message was. And the monitor um, for each particular delivery option, whether it's an email, a text, a flat file, webcast, a report, a workflow, or an email response. This is all um, being monitored to show you what's pending, what's been sent, and if there's an error. So you have these tools to be able to go in and see the different delivery options and if they were successful or not. That's what the monitor is. An event designer, this is what I call the meat and potatoes of Sage Alerts. You come in here, and we have our application events. Now, Sage Alerts and Workflow allows you to download pre-configured event packs, they're called. And for Sage 100, there is just so many of them. You'll see I have AP, AR, Bill of Materials, Inventory Control, PO, Sales Order, and Operations Management. If I expand these and look at my events, 
these all came with the system. They are pre-configured and all you have to do is come in here and make a few tweaks to connect up to your database and boom, they're yours. And you can start adding your subscribers. You can get these up and running fairly quickly. If you wanted to add your own uh, uh, event and you wanted to customize that to have different parameters, it's always a good idea to look at one that was already set up to give you an idea of how this setup is configured and you can use those tools to create your own. I always tell people, look at ones that have already been created before you create your own, because sometimes you may not need to, you know, start it, reinvent the wheel. What is an application event? So it's going to be a connection, right? So this is my AP application event. It's saying, hey, connect me to Sage 100, my version 2022 connection. If I go in here and I add a connection, I have it connect to an ODBC connection and you can test it here and it'll tell you if there's a problem with the connection. So this connects you up to your Sage database. Now within the Sage database, we have um, the ability to make a query. So let's go into a query and let's go into just this one. A query is the ability to go out there and say, okay, um, I want to use specific tables and pull in information to be able to satisfy a condition. So it has all of our Sage 100 tables here in green on the left. And then I select the tables that I want to use. And then within those tables, I select the columns that I want to use as well. And I start developing my query. So I can go out there and I could say, for example, these are the um, customers, the balance, the credit limit. This is just really giving me account information for a customer. You see, I did a preview and it, it previews nicely all of my data. A query is used in an event. Now, what is an event? Event is the ability to attach. Let's just go into this one, for example. On a schedule, the delivery of the data. So in this example, I have invoices overdue for payment. Now I can add a schedule. You can see that there's all these pre-configured schedules, but I can create my, my own. Let's just say I want it every Friday at five o'clock. Then my triggers, what kind of triggers can I have? Well, I can have a link it to a query, which we just saw what a query is all about. I can link it to a script, or if I have the proper subscription, I can link it to a web API. In my case here, I just have it linked to a query. These are my invoices that are overdue, um, has, have an overdue balance greater than X. It's gonna ask me, hey, what is X? So for demo purposes, I put in that it's only a dollar just to get more data in there to show you. Then you come in here and say, well, how do I want this event delivered? You can have a chart, a report, a flat file. You can do the, um, and that is for the content, by the way. The delivery method can be the email, a text, or a webcast. And then your workflow actions. Do you want it to create a file, run a script, run a program, submit a SQL, and, and lastly, a web API? Those are all the examples of your deliverables. Mine, in this case, is just an email. And what it's doing at the bottom here is it's saying the following customers are overdue for payment. This is an HTML format email, and we can put in the columns that were in our query. So keep in mind when you create a query, what you want the message to look like, because you're going to need to add those columns if you want them to be in the email message. Subscribers, these are the people that you want to be able to receive the email. So we have a list of subscribers. If I add a subscriber here and I go to the help desk, for example, you'll see that I'm added in there and I could add myself to that. Then we have advanced subscribers. This is cool because you can say, okay, this database field contains the email address to send in, send into. So instead of this, I could say it is a salesperson, sales rep email address, for example. I could put that in there and it'll um, send the alert to those salespeople. Up here, I can message break the emails, perhaps by salesperson, perhaps uh, by customer service rep and things like that. 
So those are what queries and events are all about. Now, if I wanted to run this query, for example, as a test, I'm going to do run now up here just to show you what that is going to do. It's going to say it's been scheduled. We talked about the monitor. If I go into the monitor and I go into the email delivery, you will see that it will appear in here as pending in a little while and it will send the email to myself as well. So the email comes um, after it checks everything. If it there is an error, obviously it will explain what that error is. The ability to um, troubleshoot the errors is pretty simple. The Sage Alerts and Workflow, you can always call us or they have a good uh, res response um, support system as well. Now, while we're waiting for that to go through, let me explain a little bit more about the um, subscribers. If I click in the event designer, here's that subscriber list we were talking about. And if I click on one of my emails as one of my subscribers here, you can see that you can set up your users in here. You can give them multiple email addresses. There's a primary and a secondary. I can turn on email addresses for certain days. And then I can say um, that they are able to have the co uh, copy uh, copy references here, webcast, texting. Then it'll tell me for this particular subscriber, these are all the alerts that they're subscribed to, which is nice because sometimes when you are changing an alert, you might want to notify the subscribers that a change has been made and this will tell you, okay, this person receives it, this person receives it, et cetera. So those are the subscribers and the, um, let's go back to our monitor and see what's happening. So it was sent. I skipped the pending process because I was chatting about subscribers, but you can see here that the invoices overdue for payment was sent to my email address and it was sent at this particular time. And uh, my email is closed right now, but it, when I open up my email, I certainly will have that email in my inbox. Back over here to application events. So let's talk more about uh, what, let's go into inventory, for example, and an inventory event, the reorder, I think I showed this in the real life example. So in addition to the areas that I showed you, I just wanna show a couple of other different things. So you can have repeat notifications turned on for alerts. This means that, okay, these are the items that need to be reordered today. Now tomorrow, do you wanna be notified about those items again and the next day and the next day? If so, then you would check this repeat notification for triggered items. Then um, you'll be uh, notified until that condition goes away. Then I wanted to show you down here, when we come into deliverables, when I click that I wanna add a report in here, you will see it wants to know, okay, where is the report? You do have to add in your reports into uh, Sage Alerts before you can attach them to a specific event. I think I have one in here for that AR event that we talked about, overdue for payment. So if I have this deliverable and I wanted to add in a report, I could come in here and add a report. Oops, let me pivot here for a minute because I'm not sure where that report resides. There's um, under each application, you do have a reports menu here. And here is, and you add in the reports that you want applicable to that particular application. So here it is here, here's my invoice report. What I'm saying is, is that this is a way to attach your crystal reports or your SSRI, SSRI reports. And not only that, you can have a dynamic output file name. So every time I invoice these customers of their overdue invoices, the file name .pdf, for example, is um, going to be the invoice number, which is super nice. So coming back into my events here, invoices overdue for payment. If I wanted to add in a report, I can look into Sage here and I can see that the report was already added. And if I come over here, it'll list the report um, location, etc. So 
when I add in re the report, you'll see now my deliverable includes the invoice as well as the, as, and it'll attach it to this email. And then you do have to make sure on the bottom here that you have include reports as email attachments as well. So lots of good stuff here in the program. Let's talk about, um, you know, being able to link queries against each other. You can do that. You can say, hey, one query is dependent on another query, and you can link those two together and attach those in, a, in an event. You can have um, job streams, which means that one uh, event needs to go after another event. Um, it's like a timeline because uh, people can't be notified about one condition until another one has been completed. And then these are the event packs uh, that I talked about that it come free with the program. There's just so many in here. If I'll just go into the operations management one, for example, this is just talks about, you know, statuses, uh, budgets, uh, assignees on work tickets, whether they're on hold, uh, lots of good things. So there's just so much that you can be uh, alerted by. Program is so inexpensive which I'm gonna talk about next. Let's go back to our PowerPoint here. So Sage Alerts and for Workflow offers you a free trial. And what does that mean? You can download and install the program and use it free for 90 days, which is amazing. You can set up alerts, um, you can download the event packs, you can customize them to yourself, test them out. 90 days is quite a long time to get all this done. and. I have rarely seen anybody do this and say, oh, you know what, we don't want it. It's just um, a way to prove before you sign anything and pay for anything that it, it is a very valuable program. So this is the website that you would download that product, Member Knowledge Sync, the word knowledge, that is um, going to be available, uh, have available resources on it and be able to download the product as well as the, as well as the event packs. Educational videos. Amazing. That's all I got to say. I'm self-taught on the program and I have used um, their videos to train myself and it's I can't say enough about the educational videos. Lastly, once again, those free event packs. There's um, so many front office, back office applications. And like I said, you're going to download it from that Knowledge Think website. What does implementation look like? So you can um, install on a cloud server or uh, a dedicated server. You don't need a, a dedicated server, however. It can be installed on a workstation even. I do wanna mention that if you are linking it up to Sage 100 standard or advanced, that it is recommended and advised to be installed on its own server um, or have it virtual. It's recommended, but not required. A lot of our clients do have it on the same server as Sage and it works just fine. It depends how many alerts you have. Are they running every minute? Is it taxing on the system? Those are all the things that you have to consider. And I forgot to mention that it this implementation can take just a half a day. We can have it up and running for you. Next, uh, we install the IIS communications. Uh, we install Sage Alerts and Workflow after that. We connect it to your email. You know, we can do SMTP, OAuth, et cetera. The subscribers we would set up, we would look at your reports, forums, your charts. Uh, do those need to be set up? One thing about forums and reports for Crystal, I must mention, is that if you were to attach an invoice to an alert, you can't just simply take your crystal form from Sage and pop it into Sage Alerts because those are what we call work files, temporary work files. You have to convert it to the, um, a, like for example, the AR invoice history header and detail. You have to convert everything to a non-work file. It can be a little bit of uh, time consuming to do that, but once it's done, it's done and you never have to look at it again, unless you're making edits, of course. Um, there is there is an email monitoring and response system, which I did not show you in the program. So do you need an inbox monitored, for example? There, the program has uh, a requirement to have SQL management services installed, and there is an inbox in there if you wanted to be able to monitor that and, have, and know about the responses. When somebody replies to an email, do you want to know about it? You have to set up the conditions and what Sage Alerts and Workflow has to look in that response, um, but it is doable. And then do you need workflows? 
do you need to link actions? Uh, that would be the API SQL statements and VB scripts. And then as you see in red there, training is provided by VBCC. So a lot of times when we have implementations, you know, we work with somebody on a couple of alerts together and we, you know, that is uh, getting a couple of alerts done and at the same time going in and uh, training them as well on everything. So what is the cost? There are four areas that you would have to make the decision on. Um, the first one is required. It's $120 a month. It is the base product. So this is used to deliver an unlimited number of alerts, email, text message, uh, FTP, web dashboard. And then this is delivered to an unlimited number of recipients, both inside and outside your organization. So. Very inexpensive, $120 a month. Now, if you wanted to attach reports and forms and things like that, it's an extra $95 a month. This is optional. It's only purchased once. The workflow module is another $95 a month. This is optional. It's the ability to add or update information in one or more application databases with the use of a REST API, for example, SQL statements, stored procedures, visual basic scripts, and things like that. You have the ability to export triggered events um, to data to a flat file. And once again, this is only purchased once and applies to all the connections. When we talk about connections, they're uh, $95 per month. So you if you had more, if you had more than one company code in Sage 100 and you wanted to use alerts and workflow to monitor. Uh, those company codes, you would need to purchase an additional connection. Once you reach four, you're considered an alum, you're considered granted an unlimited amount of connections. Now, I say Sage 100, but you certainly can connect to other uh, software programs with these connections. Uh, Starship, CRM, HRMS, those are all uh, programs that can integrate with Sage Alerts and Workflow. So as you can see, very affordable. We talked about um, all the time savings that your users uh, can save by having these alerts sent to them on a regular basis. All of that time savings relates to money, relates to uh, profitability. Very, very user-friendly program. It's a set it and forget it type of attitude. You put these alerts in, set them up. Yes, there's work to be done on that end, but you forget about it. It's done. It's running in the background. It's 24 seven. It's saving you the time and the energy to do all these things manually. So uh, what we're going to do is give you our information here. Uh, if you wanted to learn more about the program, if you wanted a private demo, if you wanted to discuss implementation and what that would mean for you, this is my contact information. But thank you for attending, and we wish you all a good day.